All right, so I've already talked about what I'm going to talk about today, and I'm probably not going to say anything too <laughs> profound or new. It's just the same thoughts that I keep having, but man, this topic is ridiculously uh, relevant right now, obviously, and it's also ridiculously important. And if you didn't notice from the title, obviously I'm talking about the presidential election. Um, this is kind of stupid to say, but this is something that's really been making me nervous and like stressed out. And yeah, I feel like, I almost feel like, uh, I'm going to be like, <laughs> if Trump loses, I feel like I'm going to be like the, the, the meme girl with her green hat from the 2016 election. No, obviously I'm not going to act like an idiot like that. It's just going to be an internal thing. Like, Oh my God, this didn't just happen. Did it? But yeah, it's like this oh man this this election is very critical i mean trump 100 billion percent needs to win (laughs) like the candidates right now are so extremely opposite that it's ridiculous normally you know candidates are roughly on the same page one's democrat one's republican so they have slightly different ideas on things but it's mostly within the same page your your end goal is you know you just want to be the leader of the country and you want to take the country in the direction that you think's best, but you're roughly on the same page, you know, because you're an American and you care about this country and you have the same ideals as everyone else. You don't have some weird extremist ideals of, oh yeah, I want to take over so I can kill this country. <laughs> no, it's like, well, yeah, I, I live here. I care about this country. I, I, I would like to lead it. Also, I mean, for some people like Joe Biden, it's just a capstone. Like, oh, I've been in politics for 50 years and now I made it to the top position. Ugh. You don't even really care. It's just more of a personal thing why you care, which is kind of a crap reason to want to be the president. You know, it's very selfish and that's not why you should want to do it. I mean, you're supposed to be elected by the people to represent the people and your country, not just to be like, oh, I made it to president. Oh, I fulfilled my destiny. Some nonsense. But in this election, it's, oh man, these candidates are way too extremely different. You have one candidate, Trump, who wants to bring a lot of like very incredible change and, and improvements to this country and just make a super solid difference that hopefully would last forever. And then you have another candidate that is the exact opposite she's she's bringing nothing to the table i mean geez she straight up said before in the in the in the view interview that they had they asked her oh if, if you know would if there's <clears throat> why am i stumbling if you had an opportunity to change anything about biden's presidency what would you change and she was like i don't think i can think of anything that i would change so it's like oh okay so you mean to tell me if you win absolutely nothing is going to change Which makes no sense because her slogan is, let's turn the page. How are we going to be turning the page if, A, you're currently the VP, which means you're part of the mess that we're in. So, what, we're going to turn the page from you to you? How how does that make any sense? (laughs) It's not turning the page at all. You're on the same page. You're on the same chapter. You're in the same book. You didn't even finish the last book and get into a new book. You know, you're reading an anthology and still on book one. Okay, hey, I changed. I turned the page. I went from page 65 to page 66. I'm making progress in this book. Like, so that's one. And two, like, how are, how are you supposed to have any change if you just said to the people on The View that, well, I guess if I could choose anything to change about Biden's presidency, I wouldn't change anything. That's literally no change. <laughs> you even already said that. So, like, what is supposed to be different about you? Nothing. (coughs) Not only that, but she has terrible policies. I mean, I can't say terrible policies because she doesn't have policies. What does she do? All she talks about is Trump nonstop. Well, Donald Trump, Donald Trump, Donald Trump, Donald Trump, Donald Trump, Donald Trump. That's all she talks about. Like, stop talking about him, you loser. Talk about yourself. What are you going to bring to the table? What, you're going to bring Donald Trump to the table? Is that all you got? So you're going to help him win the election then? Is that basically what you're saying? I mean, because you seem to have nothing else that you're bringing to the table. You never talk about yourself. You never. She never says anything she's going to do. It's all just, well, Donald Trump. Like in the interview that she did with Brett Baer, there's one period where I forget the question. He says something, asks her a question about some crap policy that her and Biden had. 
And her response is, but Donald Trump's been running. He's been running to be president. And the answer had nothing to do with the question. It was like, what are you saying, you dumb broad? I mean, on top of that, I think that's what she followed up with. Brett, you know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> we both know what I mean. And at least, you know, he didn't say anything about her, her brain dead comment about Trump running for president, which made no sense at all. I wish he would have been like, what are you talking about? Who cares if he's running for president? You're the current VP. He's just a private citizen right now. What, what, what are you trying to say? He didn't. He let that slide. Or at least so we think. Maybe maybe all the footage was edited and that's what we got. I don't know. That was done live though, right? So I guess it couldn't be edited. But she at least... I mean, he at least did call her out on the nonsense when she said, We both know what I'm thinking. And he said, No, I don't. Nobody did. So it's good that he said that because nobody knows what she's thinking. She doesn't even know what she's thinking. <laughs> After he said that, didn't she have like no response? She kind of stumbled. Like, uh, uh, it's like those jokes on TikTok when, when the guy goes up to somebody random in Walmart and tells them like a really dumb joke that makes no sense. Like, what do you call a fat, hairy dog? Old popcorn. And then the person laughs. And then like, then he's like, did you get it? And the guy, the guy's like, yeah. And he's like, explain it to me then. And then he's like, and then all the guys thinking like, well, I don't know what that means. A fat, hairy dog is old popcorn. Uh, you know, that's like what her thing was. After she said her stupid, we both know what I'm thinking. Then he says, I don't know. And then she was kind of like, oh, uh, I guess I don't know what I mean either. Because I'm a fucking idiot. Duh. And it was like, yeah, broad, you are an idiot. You say stupid stuff that makes no sense. You, you just flap your lips and let noise come out of your mouth hole all the time. I mean, you're a pro at the word salads. Because that's the only way you know how to speak. <laughs> oh, I said a sentence. <laughs> But yeah, this broad has no policies. But what I was saying though when I said policies, I didn't mean policies. I just mean like stuff that we're aware of about her. Like A, she's ridiculously communist. It's funny because she wants to constantly call Trump fascist. Oh my God, he's so fascist. He's Hitler. Ah! Which is the most brain dead comment anybody could say. Yeah, yeah. The guy that fla- hugged the American flag, he's Hitler. Yeah, the guy that wants to do all these awesome things to make the country great for everybody. He's, so, he's totally Hitler. Yep. Yeah. I know. The first time he was president was so bad. Oh, we almost had a genocide. Oh. Or, you know, he's supposedly so racist. Oh, my God, I know. So racist. You know, he's do- he's done so many good things for the black community under his, um, you know, real estate um, umbrella. But, oh, my God, the guy's so racist. Oh. It's just anything to be a bunch of idiots and just say stupid things all the time. It's all they do, the Democrats in general. That's what I mean by them. Constantly gaslight. <coughs> oh, ah. Always dry. <coughs> always get heated doing these two. That probably doesn't help. But anyways, always gaslighting, always coming up with the dumbest claims. And you get so many brain-dead idiots that just fall into it. Duh! Oh, Trump's racist, the TV told me. Oh, my God, he's a fascist. Oh. He's Hitler. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, she goes and says all that stuff, but then she's a communist. Yeah, she hasn't straight up said it, but all the things that she thinks would be good are communist. Hey, I think everybody should have uh, equal opportunity. Not e- Yeah, what is it? No, not equal. No, everybody currently has equal opportunity. What is it? Everybody should just have the same amount. Yeah, that's what it is. Everyone should just have the same amount. Yeah. Okay, you communist. That makes sense. Yeah, so the doofus that puts no effort into their life should have the same amount as the person that's done a lot and worked really hard and come up with innovations and all this. Yep, that makes sense, you moron. Or like when she says, um, what did she say recently? Um, oh man, I just heard it earlier. Some dumb new claim that she's got about Trump that he's, uh, uh, oh, yeah, he wants to destroy the Constitution. Oh, he wants to get rid of the Constitution. Uh, <laughs> come on. Oh, he wants to blah, blah, blah. And it's just like, broad, when did he ever say this? Never. He's never said that he wants to abolish the Constitution or, or whatever you, you're trying to claim. You know who is trying to modify it, though? You! <laughs> God, what the heck? My throat is so dry. I don't even have the heat on. 
Anyways, yeah, she's the one that wants to change it, though. She's constantly trying to, you know, she wants to get rid of the Second Amendment. She wants to put in uh, orders to confiscate everyone's guns. She wants to heavily modify the First Amendment. Why? Because she's part of the Democrat machine that doesn't like the truth being told. They believe that only their propaganda should be out there, and that's it. If you say the truth, uh, it's, uh, it's misinformation. Kind of like when everybody was talking about how stupid Biden has raging Alzheimer's, or at least severe dementia, let's say. And they constantly like, oh, no, he's sharp. He's super sharp. Or stupid Jean-Pierre, or whatever her stupid name is, was like, ah, oh, those videos are just cheap fakes. He is not cognitively impaired. Until the debate happened, and it was live, and everyone saw in real time how he couldn't speak, couldn't think, couldn't function. And it was like, oh, what now, Democrats? How are you going to cover this one up? Oh, yeah, you can't. So instead, these idiots threw a coup and installed this moron now as the front runner of their party. Which now ties into another issue with the Democrats and, and Kamala. And it's that, um, you know, they're always talking about, we got to save our democracy! we got to save our democracy by turning it into communism. Uh. Basically. And it's like, you got to save your democracy? So you think you're going to save democracy by... <coughs> oh, God. By overthrowing the front runner of your party, a guy who's made it very clear that he's not interested in stepping down. I mean, <laughs> not like he should stay in office. He, he's clearly gone. I mean, I don't know who's running the country now because this guy can't keep it together at all anymore his mental acuity is gone <laughs> at least before it was at like 15 percent. now it's just straight up zero i mean this guy can't speak he can't function he, it's like how are you supposed to be the president for the next three months <laughs> like how i don't get it <laughs> basically three months you know because january 20th so it's not november 20th yet so we got november that's one month december two months january three months like yeah this guy couldn't couldn't do it anymore two months ago and like but anyways regardless he thought he could do it and then they just decided to force him out threw him out and then just installed this broad and that they installed the worst option they had too like what were they even thinking what because she's the current vp or something first off as vice president she was extremely unpopular very lowly rated and that's mostly just to, due to failures in in her job. Her only thing she really had to do was border, be the border czar, and she never went to the border. Of course, made retarded excuses. Oh, well, I've never been to Europe. Okay, broad, and we're telling you to go to the border of the United States, which is a country you live in. Nobody's telling you to go to Europe, you idiot. What kind of example is it? Oh, I've never been to Europe. Okay, and oh, she's such a stupid person. But yeah, very lowly rated. Probably also lowly rated just because of how dumb and annoying she is. She speaks to everyone like they're stupid, even though her IQ is about 10. You know, talking about the yellow school buses. Who doesn't love a yellow school bus? <laughs> or Venn diagrams. Like, who doesn't love a Venn diagram? Broad. Kids in third grade don't love Venn diagrams. Why do you? So stupid. But yeah, and then her dumb cackle all the time. I'm sure people are sick of that. That's why she was ridiculously lowly rated as VP, because she just sucked. She's terrible all around. No charisma, no brain, no... Doesn't do the job at all. And then obviously she wasn't even qualified to be VP at all. She constantly failed up in her career prior. I mean, she was a DEI hire. That's what the Democrats needed was a DEI hire. She was available. She ticked tons of boxes. She's a woman. She's... Um, Jamaican. She's um, uh, uh, Indian. Um, she's also can pretend that she's black. Um, so yeah, that's four boxes. That's three real boxes and then a fake fourth box that she can check. So they're like, okay, yeah, let's just put her in there. I mean, geez, you could even put in how she's in an interracial marriage with Doug. And uh, what else? That, that makes a fifth box. Um, you know? <laughs> That's the only reason why she got it, though. She wasn't qualified at all. And she failed up her entire career. Entire career. She, she, the only reason she got started was because of Willie Brown or whatever his name was. If he didn't fool around with her and cheat on his wife or, or whatever, or she didn't meet him ever, 
She'd be nothing this today. Literally nothing. Because she's too stupid and worthless, she would have achieved nothing. <laughs> She'd be like a stripper at best. You know what I mean? Or, the, or her McDonald's job would be real. She'd be working at a McDonald's, maybe as a shift manager. She'd be able to work her way up to that at least. Not even store manager, just shift manager. You know, something that most high schoolers can attain. <laughs> But it's like, yeah, and then when she tried to run for president in 2020, in the primaries, she got, what, what was it, 7% of the vote? (laughs) Practically nothing. Dead last. Like, nobody wanted her. (laughs) And now all of a sudden, the Democratic Party throws a coup against Joe Joe Biden, and then they're like, eh, we'll just put this terrible option in the front runner. Yeah, this should be a potential next president. Yep. The lady that can't speak, the lady that can't anything. That that's it. That's the one. There we go. I mean, I've always said since day one that Joe Biden was a terrible president. He was, and I guess still is. I almost feel like you can't blame him anymore though, because the dementia is just fully set in. So I don't know. Does it really count anymore? But at least when he was a little more cognitively with it, you know, at forty percent. <laughs> Uh, 40% capacity He was a terrible president But I always said Kamala would be so much worse Like there used to be jokes about him like dying or whatever Like you know so that way then Kamala You know Kamala The jokes were like Kamala must be hoping Oh I hope he just dies That way then I can take over (laughs) And it was like no As much as Joe sucks he can't die Because she would be way worse And yet here we are Potentially on the brink of that absolute disaster coming into the top position and it's like how you know michael moore made a documentary fahrenheit 11 9 that was about trump coming to the presidency and one of his opening lines is how did we get to this point and when i watched that documentary i think we got to this point because politics usually sucks hillary clinton was a terrible candidate and trump was way better had way more charisma he got the position he was awesome at it so it all worked out nothing to worry about But I feel like now, (laughs) maybe Dinesh D'Souza should make a documentary using that same line, but with Kamala. Even if she loses, still use it as her. Like, how did she get to be the front runner of the party when she's extremely unqualified and terrible? How did this almost become our president? Which I hope this sentence remains true, that it's almost and doesn't actually happen. So yeah, circling back, or maybe this is a really big, long weave like Trump does. So this is what I'm talking about. How, like, it just makes me nervous. Because she cannot win. She's terrible. I just went over it all. She's horrible. One of the worst front runners of all time. And then you got uh, Tim Walls. (laughs) Again, they keep somehow finding a VP that's even worse than their front runner. You know, by... You had Barack. He was bad, but Biden was worse. Somehow Biden made it to the front, and he had Kamala. She was terrible. Kamala's terrible. She's got Tim Walls, who's somehow worse. How do you keep finding somebody worse? How is there even somebody out there that is able to be worse? It doesn't make sense. (laughs) Like, (laughs) Kamala's bottom of the barrel, and somehow Tim Walls is under that barrel. He's so far down, he can't even get in the barrel. So the barrel's just on top of him. Like, what? How? (coughs) And then the next election cycle, let's say this idiot's the front runner, Tim Walls for somehow. I'm sure he'll find somebody who's even worse. And it would be like, how how is there somebody worse than Tim Walls? (laughs) Oh, but yeah. So, and, and the thing is, is I just don't understand how there's people supporting her. I don't understand how people see this absolute failure, career failure, someone who couldn't even do her one job that she was assigned as VP. I don't understand how people see this and think, yeah, I want to vote for that. Oh yeah, I want that one. That's the one I'm going to vote for. And then brag about it. You got idiots on... TikTok and and Twitter and stuff bragging about, oh, I went to the polls today and cast my vote to save democracy. I voted blue. Oh, wow, you're brain dead. You clearly do not pay attention to anything surrounding the world around you, do you? 
You put CNN on and say, Duh, Rachel Maddow, duh. Actually, she's MSNBC, right? You know what I'm trying to say, though. Duh, fill my stupid head up with dumb thoughts because I can't think on my own. I can't do my own research. What do you say today? Trump said that Liz Cheney should be shot. Okay, duh. I won't research the clip in its full co- context to learn what he really was saying. I'll just trust you, duh. What's that? A comedian that has absolutely nothing to do with the Trump campaign other than being a guest that was probably invited by Trump Jr. just because Trump Jr. likes him on a personal level and listens to his podcast Kill Tony regularly ended up being a entertainment speaker at Trump's rally and he made a joke about Puerto Rico which really was actually pretty true because Puerto Rico is having a huge environmental crisis right now and this guy is actually pretty heavily invested in that and and, and, and environmental issues globally as a whole and so he does know what he's talking about and when he made a joke saying that Puerto Rico is heavily overrun by trash it's actually accurate but he was just making a spin on it to make a joke but because he said at a Trump rally, that became extremely racist. Oh my God, okay, I'll believe that. Uh, Trump doesn't like Latinos. Duh. Like, that's, it's like the most brain dead people are supporting Kamala. <laughs> and really, you can't be that smart because all these people, or at least majority of them, vast majority of them, were, oh, I'm riding with Biden. Oh my God, I'm, Bi- I'm going to vote for Biden. Then they throw a coup, install this broad, and they're, oh, my God. You know, the faggots come out. Oh, white, white dudes for Harris. The white gays for Harris, you mean. Or the dumb broads are like, oh, okay, I guess I'll just start voting for her. Oh, it's not Biden anymore? Okay, I'll vote for her. Duh. I won't question it at all. I won't say, wait, why is she the front runner after I was Biden? Why wasn't there a primary that I could choose who the new front runner should be? What's going on here? Nope, I won't have any kind of brain at all and think about this and wonder about what's going on. I'm just going to support Kamala because now she's the front runner for mysterious reasons. <sighs> but yeah, I mean, the only, really the only positions that Kamala has is A, abortion, which, cool. I'm glad murdering babies is that high on the Democrats' um, list of priorities. People can't afford groceries as easily as they could before because things are so violently expensive for absolutely no reason. Well, I mean, there is a reason, but you know what I'm trying to say. It's like a hyperbole statement there. Hyperbolous statement. But it's like, that's expensive. Gas is relatively high. Um... You know, wages, real wages, as they say, are down. Inflation's still pretty juicy. What's it at, like five point something percent? You know, there's all these real problems that affect everybody on a day to day. But nope, the Democrats are just going to focus on abortion. That really only affects women between what the ages of eighteen and forty, <laughs> and <coughs> also women who are. Um, you know, leftists and, you know, just really fr- fringe individuals. It's not your average everyday woman. Obviously, it doesn't affect the conservative women. women. Most likely, they are, you know, normal enough to be in a steady relationship. So if they do get pregnant, they're with a man that they're planning on spending their life with. So they don't have to worry about an abortion. They're ready to make a family. The guy's there to be the, a father that's involved with the child. Like, you know, so it doesn't affect them. It doesn't affect any men, really. You know, men don't get abortions. <laughs> like, it's a very slim fringe subset of freaks that are so worried about Abortions, And the irony is most of these freaks that are worried about abortions are either A, older women, like the women on The View. They're staunch supporters of Roe v. Wade's overturning becoming overturned. And yet they're all like way past menopause. It's like, what are you even worried about? You don't, you can't get pregnant. <laughs> Whoopi, when do you think you're going to get pregnant? Joy Behar, when do you think you're going to get pregnant? Relax. It doesn't even affect you. It's either that or it's like real hideous freaks that are... Uh, you know, blue hair, long armpit hair, weird hairstyle, like, you know, half mohawk, half like Fu Manchu, um, just morbidly obese, disgusting, probably smell like moldy, like 
macaroni and cheese, but not macaroni and cheese, more like a container, like one of those cups that you can microwave, and then they just never threw it away, and they kind of just sat in their bed, and they laid on it, and, like, they just smell weird. You know, those kind of broads that aren't getting dick. So how are you going to get pregnant? Or it's these same liberal freaks who are just lesbians. Again, how are you going to get pregnant? You're not even interested in the right equipment. Or it's apparently trans people. Like the one that was on the the Jubilee episode with Ben Shapiro. And then that that one's like, I have a vagina. And it's like, wow, okay, you're weird. (laughs) So you're a lesbian who thinks you're a man. So basically you have zero chance of getting pregnant because A, lesbian. (coughs) And B, you think you're a man. And I think you think you're a straight man, which means you wouldn't be taking dick because then according to you, even though that would actually make you straight, because you'd be taking dick and you still have a taco. According to you, that would make you a gay guy. And you don't think of yourself as gay, even though you're with a woman. So you are a lesbian, but you don't see it that way. You see it as you're a straight man. So you're doubly zero that you're not going to be getting pregnant. Like, pfft. but you know, that's the type that are worrying about it. Not anybody normal. So yeah, that's her one dumb platform. Wow. Great platform. Cool. And then all the other nonsense I said, you know, trying to destroy the Constitution and ruin the country and et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, she's uh, a very terrible candidate. And that just makes me nervous because I'm like, if, if anybody with a brain wouldn't be voting for her. That's the thing. Anybody that pays attention for real, anybody that has any kind of sense about them, they wouldn't be voting for her. So you wouldn't have to worry because you'd know, ah, she's never going to make it. Why would you choose her? It's kind of like when you're in middle school. You know, the kids know who's the smart ones in class. So anytime you have like a group brain game, they choose you first. But then if you're not super athletic, they choose you last because they know, ah, you're going to suck. I need good players. Well, that's like this. If people paid attention, they'd be like, why am I going to vote for this moron? But no, apparently, from what I hear... She's basically toe to toe in the prime in in the general election right now, and it's like the swing states actually matter. Why? They shouldn't matter at all. Trump should be blowing her out of the water easily. This should be like a Reagan Mondale situation where Trump is just absolutely dominating, and then like California is just stupid enough to keep voting for her. <coughs> That's another thing too, kind of like a side note. All these places that keep voting Democrat, why? What has Democrats ever done for you that's made your life better? Literally nothing. But these idiots just keep voting blue. Look at the places that vote blue all the time. Look what they've turned into. Look at California. That place is such a piece of trash nowadays because it's been blue for so long. Gavin Newsom, he's a horrible governor. One of the worst governors currently in the country. And look, look at how California is. It should be a nice place. It has a reputation for the... For the, the, the palm the palm trees and all that, the nice beaches and everything, surfing, this and that. But this loser's destroyed it. But yeah, let's keep voting blue. Yeah, because that makes sense, California. Good thinking. You really got your, your, your priorities right. Oh, I, I can't vote Republican because that would fix the state. I want to be able to walk around and see shit all over the place. If I vote Republican, that's not going to be a thing anymore. They're going to clean up those streets. And it's not going to be just because Xi Jinping comes here. It's just going to be because there's a Republican in charge. I can't have that. Or look at Chicago. Chicago's been run by Democrat mayors forever. Lori Lightfoot, she sucked. Whoever was before her sucked. And the idiot now sucks. But, yo, keep voting blue. Keep Keep living in a city with super high crime and everything. That makes sense. Vote blue. There you go. Don't change a thing. Or even New York. New York's falling apart. New York used to be somewhere cool too, just like California. But nope, keep voting blue. Get these dumb blue mayors in there to just ruin the city. Let the state fall apart with a stupid blue governor. There you go. Now you're thinking. And then just keep going with it. Now these morons voting for Kamala. Why? Because she's a Democrat? Oh, I got to vote blue. Uh, vote blue no matter who. Duh, that's a good motto to have. 
don't use my brain at all and try to look at the two candidates and really discover their their positions on things and all that. Nope. Just follow a stupid motto. Vote blue no matter who. Duh. I'm brainless. Duh. Everything that's Democrat goes to hell, but that's okay. I got to vote blue. You know, Trump needs to win because, as I said in the very beginning, he has a plan to do a lot of awesome stuff. I mean, the awesome things he wants to do are he's going to enlist RFK Jr. to clean up the food industry and everything. Really make everything so much more healthy. Our food is terrible. All these dumb chemicals. Everything's so highly processed, so packed with chemicals. Like, high fructose corn syrup is in everything. Red 40 is practically in everything. What is it, yellow 30 or something? That's practically in everything, too. If it doesn't have red 40, it's got yellow 30 or whatever the yellow is. I'm not sure on the yellow number, but you know what I mean. You know, everything has high fructose corn syrup. That's, like, impossible to try and stay away from. It's like if you go on a diet and you try to stay away from high fructose corn syrup, all you're left with is, like, Obviously, homemade stuff, like you could buy meat and stuff. But otherwise, like select few ketchups and barbecue sauces, and that's really about it. Everything else has high fructose corn syrup sprinkled in it. It's ridiculous. So he's going to come and clean that up. He's also put a tweet out recently, or whatever they're called now, an X out, I don't know, that said that he's going to work on uh, removing all the fluoride from the waters, which is great. Because fluoride in water is terrible. Yeah, you got all these dumb brain dead idiots. Oh my god, that's so stupid. Duh. No, it's not. Fluoride in water has been proven to be very bad, but yet they keep it in there because <coughs> they were able to propagandize all the dumb people into believing that it was good. So now these idiots are like, Duh, I gotta add the fluoride in my water. Duh. I wonder why I'm stupid. Is it because I have fluoride in my water? No, probably not. So he's going to clean that up. Like, he's just going to come in and clean up all the food. And then we'll have awesome, healthier food. Or at least less unhealthy. Not as processed. Not as much junk in the processing process. (laughs) So he's going to do that. He's going to have Elon come along and basically thin out the government. Get rid of useless departments. Get rid of useless employees. Kind of like he did for Twitter. He fired, what, 75% of the people and it still works exactly the same as it always has? So that means that many people were just a waste. They were just there hanging out like, oh, making those dumb TikToks. Oh, day in the life of a, of a Twitter employee. So I start with giving myself a bagel. Then I go make myself a vanilla chai. Then I have a meeting. Then I go to his office to be by myself for two hours. Then I go meditate. Then I go to yoga class. Then it's lunchtime. We get free lunch. Oh, no. You know, these idiots. So Musk was like, yeah, for you, you're a total waste of space. Bye. So now he can do that for the government. Tighten the government right up. Get rid of all the useless departments, all the useless people. A, that'll probably help shrink the government a little. You know, the whole point back in the day when the country was formed and stuff was to have small government. Over time, it's been getting much bigger and bigger and bigger. So I think less government offices and stuff will help bring stuff down. And it'll actually get smaller, like it should be, for one. And then for two... That's a lot of money that could be saved. No longer funding all these departments and paying all these people. You know, not like it's going to help our taxes any, but as long as something reasonable happens with the extra money, like say it goes towards the debt, not the deficit. I hate how politicians always talk about deficit. Oh, I cut the deficit. Oh, cool. So you still spent a lot of money on credit, but you just did less than you did last month. Wow. Congratulations. Thanks, dickhead. So you added $500 billion to the debt instead of a trillion like you did last month? Wow, congratulations. That's something I want to brag about too. Whoa. (laughs) I always make these when I'm driving. I just said, whoa, because there's a big dead thing in the road. I'm on the highway and there's a big dead thing in the road. It just came out of nowhere. I just got done passing somebody. I'm in the middle of changing lanes and boom, there's something. I don't know what it was. It was kind of big. Not deer big. But, you know, not like a squirrel either or something kind of in the middle. Maybe it was like a fox or something. I don't know. It's kind of thick, though. Maybe it was a small coyote. I don't know. Whatever it was, was kind of big, though. Anyhow, though, back to what I was saying. So, yeah, the deficit. They're always talking about that. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I like to brag about that, too. You know, my credit card. Hey, I still have debt on my credit card I'm trying to pay off. But guess what? 
Last month I put 500 bucks on it. This month I cut my deficit. I only added 300. <laughs> I used it less. Yeah, I still have $800 to pay off, but you know, I, I added less last month, right? You should be proud of me, right? No, because you should be paying that off. So anyways, maybe the money saved from worthless departments can go towards the debt. You know, the $36 trillion just lingering over our heads. Yeah, that. Pay that down slash off. So anyways, there's those two guys that are going to be awesome and having a huge impact. And then there's Trump himself, all the things he's going to do. You know, his plan to get rid of tax on tips. I'm not a tipped employee, but there's a lot of people who are, and that's going to be huge for them. You know, some people actually make a lot of money in tips too. I'm not talking strippers. I mean, they probably do, but I'm talking like maybe bartenders at like a hopping bar, maybe in like a city in Boston or New York or something. I'm sure they can get some killer tips. And yet currently you'd have to pay taxes on that. Well, under the new system, that won't be a thing. You make a thousand dollars in tips. That's a thousand dollars you get to take home for free. Like that's going to be awesome for these people. You know, or like, um, he's also floated the idea of getting rid of the income tax and he would be able to fund, fund things in the country through tariffs. Now, on one hand, I don't know enough about how tariffs work and all that to understand what the economic fallout could be. (coughs) God, I've coughed so many times in this thing. But anyways... I've heard some people rag on it a little bit. Oh, it's just going to make things more expensive. Duh. If you're putting tariffs on things that are coming in, then that makes it more expensive. Okay, maybe. Maybe it will make things more expensive. Again, like I said, I'm not entirely sure how tariffs work. I don't know if it affects the country that's being tariffed only or what. I mean, it's got to be added to the peace price somehow. You know what I mean? If a country's being tariffed, they're not just going to eat that. They're going to add it to their product then. Oh, okay. So you're going to tariff us, then we're going to increase our prices to this. So... You know, it's got to get absorbed somehow. But I still think there would be benefit in that because it would be like this. Right now, you get paid and it's like, you know, X amount of your money is just immediately gone. I always estimate 24%. I don't know if I'm correct or no, 26%. I don't know if I'm correct, but it always seems close enough. If I do 26%, when I'm trying to guesstimate what my pay will be when I used to be hourly, it was roughly in line. I was off by a few bucks, but whatever. So 26% right out the gate is gone. You never even get to see that. So you worked for that money just for the government to be a dick bag and put their hand in and take 26% of your money. A little tiny bit more than a quarter of your pay that they did nothing for. You worked for that money, not them, but they go and put their dirty, stupid, ugly hand in there and just help themselves. So under this new system, what would happen is you would have 100% of your money or at least more. I don't know if the, I don't know if there'd still be ta- uh, state tax. I don't really know what this plan entails. Like if it would be all income tax or if it would just be federal income tax, but the states could still take their portion. I don't know. But regardless, the state portion is a lot less than the federal portion. You know, usually state, I think from my checks are, are like 36 bucks, but then the federal's like, pfft, one something plus this other crap plus this other crap. I mean, all together, my taxes come out to like 600 bucks a week. So, so I mean, if all I had was the state portion, sure, that's not that bad. I'll take about 400 bucks back from the, from the stupid government, the federal government. But anyways, here's how you can control it. Yeah. Things might get more expensive, but you'd have more money in your pocket and right out the gate. And then you can control what happens. You know what I mean? So, Say you are super thrifty. Say one week you have some bills. You got your mortgage you got to pay. Well, now you got more money in your pocket. For me, that'd be 400 bucks. That could make a huge difference. I just would be cheap that week. I can't do much this week. I don't have much money. I have to pay my mortgage. But hey, at least I had no federal income tax. So I had that extra money. Sweet. (laughs) And then the other weeks where... um, where, where maybe you do go out and do something. Again, you can kind of control what you're spending. So maybe you go out and you buy X product. 
but you only buy one thing. So maybe it costs a little bit more, but at the end of the day, you still have more money in your pocket because yeah, that one item costs you more money, but you had all your pay and, or a lot more of your pay in your pocket and you still have it because you only bought one thing. So like what I'm saying is like, I like to buy video games. So say I go to a GameStop and I buy a game, but because of tariffs and stuff, they cost more now. A used game normally that would be 30 bucks is now 40, let's say. Okay, cost me a little bit more, but I buy that one game and say I buy nothing else. Well. Okay, I paid 10 bucks more for that game, but I had 400 bucks more to start with. So I still have $390 more in my pocket. So you see what I'm saying? You really do have more money under that method, even if stuff is more expensive because of tariffs. It's not like raising the minimum wage where um, that just causes inflation and everything maintains its balance because companies like McDonald's and stuff don't want to lose money. This is different. This is the government's just giving you your money back that you worked for, and they're finding different ways to make the money. <laughs> so they're not losing out, and you're not losing out. And so, in turn, you do make out better. So, yeah, that's an awesome idea, too. Now, I don't know if that one's actually going to happen. Like I said, he kind of just floated the idea. It wasn't anything, like, solid. He wasn't like, okay, I'm definitely doing this. He was just like, yeah, I might. It was brought up in, like, an interview, and he was like, yeah, I might do that. That's a, that's a, that's a good idea. I could do it through uh, tariffs. But he wasn't like, yep, I'm definitely going to. Like, the tax on tips, that was a definitely going to. He said, yeah, I'm going to get rid of taxes on tips. This was more like, yeah, it's a cool idea. I don't know. Thinking about it. But still... If it does happen, that's sick. And then obviously he's going to secure that border, even though stupid Kamala is, oh, he doesn't care about the border. Bro, shut your dumb mouth. You're the one that was supposed to be the border czar <coughs> and couldn't be bothered to ever go to the border. <coughs> Yet Trump in 2016 campaigned on building a wall and then did start building the wall and all that. So who do you think actually cares about the border, stupid? It ain't you, so don't pretend it is. So, yeah, he's going to focus on fixing that border. He's going to get rid of all these illegals, which, again, the Democrats, oh, my God, nobody's illegal. Yeah, they are illegal. When they come over here and they don't properly get vetted and all that and try to obtain citizenship the proper way or a green card or whatever, and they're just in here, yeah, that's illegal. They're being a criminal by just doing that. Like, don't be dumb. So he's going to clean that up. He's going to handle these wars. You know, Russia, Ukraine will be done day one. I mean, he said that if he gets elected right as soon as he's president elect, he'll be bartering a deal with them. He won't even technically be president yet. And he'll still be out with shutting down the Russia, Ukraine situation. And I'm sure he's going to work on the Israel Hamas situation as well, too. It's just going to be a little more challenging because Hamas is a bunch of dickheads. I mean, they're terrorists. They're not going to play by the same rules as regular people. So that might be a little more difficult. I'm sure he'll figure it out. He'll probably just have to kind of casually threaten them with, like, military violence. And then they'll eventually s step down. But, yeah, those will be resolved. This whole Iran issue that they're trying to threaten us because, you know, Biden and Kamala are so weak and worthless that they can get away with it. That ain't going to happen with Trump. They'll send a threat and he'll be like, are you sure you want to talk to me like that? Because I can show you what happens when you do. And then they'll be like, oh, my God, I am so sorry. That's an Indian accent. I was trying to do a Arabic, whatever. But, yeah, you know, speaking of the accents, though, why is everybody going to be such a little baby about somebody doing an accent? Oh, my God, it's too racist. Is it, though? Like, if that's how they actually sound, it ain't racist, stupid. It's It's mimicking. And what do they say? Mimicry is the high, is a highest form of flattery or something? Like, relax. You know, India people do talk like that. Hello, my name is Sanjay. Like, that's how they talk. It's not making fun of anybody. It's what you've heard, and now you're just reproducing it. Ugh. Anyways, though, a <laughs> little side note there, because it's just all these people being such babies all the time. It's so annoying. Everybody's so sensitive about everything. Oh, my God. Why did you do a voice like Hank Azaria with that poo? Now, all of a sudden, he's been doing a poo all these years, and it was fine. But now, oh, my God, it's so racist. Oh, I can't believe it. Yeah, okay, shut the F up. He's been Hank, he's been um, a poo for 30 years. Now you're going to be a little baby because now it fits your stupid agenda? It's fine. It's a voice. It's a fake character, and it's a voice. Relax. But anyways, <laughs> back to that. So, yeah, he's going to handle those. 
wars. Um, he's gonna prevent any future wars from coming out because you know he's not gonna be some weak little wuss like Biden and, and even worse like Kamala. If Kamala wins, it's gonna be it's literally gonna be World War Three. Everyone's gonna be like, all right, there's nobody to keep us in check. You know what I mean? It's gonna be like when you're a kid. You know. You're 10, your brother, and you got, like, a f brother that's younger, maybe even another sibling that's younger. And then it's, like, as soon as your mom and dad go outside to, like, do yard work or something, now your siblings start acting like idiots. They're freaking out, just being all crazy and wild, and you're like, oh, my God, Mom! Mm! Yeah, that's going to be the world. They're going to be like, oh, good, it's just this weak, dumb broad. She isn't, she's not capable of doing anything. Yeah, let's go to town. <coughs> Man, I felt, I always felt bad for the military too under Biden. Like they'd have to salute that dickhead and stuff. And I'm just like, geez, that would suck. Like if I was in the military, I'd want to quit. I guess that would make me dishonorably discharged. But you know what? I would not want to salute that loser. But imagine having to salute Kamala. Oh my God. She does not deserve it at all. At all. She's going to do nothing for the country, positive at all. She's done nothing in her career to deserve it. Like, what a wasted salute. It would be so de so dehumanizing to have to salute that. Wow, I have to salute you? You've done nothing with your life, and now i got to salute you like you're something special? Ugh, that would be... Oh, I would definitely be getting dishonorably discharged then. Hey, I ain't doing this anymore. I am not going to be part of a military under this loser. I'm not, I'm not calling that my commander-in-chief... I'm not saluting that. She's brain dead. She doesn't know anything about military or anything, and I'm supposed to salute that? No, thank you. She doesn't know anything about working hard and actually building a career for herself. She's just slept her way up the whole time. Like, no. You know, if I was in the military, it's like I've worked hard to get where I'm at. I had all those grueling days of training and hard exercise and lack of sleep and all that just to salute this moron. No, thank you. Anyways, though, yeah, it's just, it makes me nervous. I'm, uh, Trump needs to win, but then it's just like, man, there's too many stupid people. And it's like, what if somehow she wins? Or what if, you know, Democrats cheat? There's that, too. So it's just like, man, oh, I'm worried. I mean, I know there's tons of support for him, but at the same time, for some reason, there's tons of support for her. And then because of electoral votes and stuff <clears throat> you know it's, it's not always the person with the higher popular vote that wins it's the person that has the more electoral votes so it's like there's that too what if he gets way more votes but he wins in like smaller states that have less um electoral vote you know what i mean so then this brain dead loser wins because she got bigger states Ugh, she just can't win she better not <laughs> she she seriously cannot win She's a horrible option. It's like you have one fantastic option and one terrible option. It's it's literally on a scale of 100 to 0. She's an absolute 0. She would be the absolute worst president of all time ever. I mean, she'd be worse than who was it? William Henry Harrison, who who died after like a month? <laughs> he didn't even have a chance to be president very long. And yet he'd still somehow be better than her. And then you got Trump, who's like 100. He's by far going to be the best. And no, no other president, or at least not in modern history, has had plans like this to really revamp our country and bring it in an awesome new direction. Like, oh, I just hope he wins. Ugh, he has to. It's not even a hope. He literally has to. But then with all these dumb people trying to assassinate him because all the lies that the media spread, that's another thing. It's like, what if he does win? Then what happens? Then then does his attempts on his life go way up? Because the idiots, hey, we need Kamala. We need the worthless one who is going to do nothing for us. We don't want the guy that's actually going to make our lives better. We want the dumb broad that's going to maintain the status quo. Eh. So then there's that. He's going to have to have really heightened... Uh, security and secret service and all this he's gonna have to ride around in like one of the pope mobile things that's all um bulletproof and stuff just so that then he can make the country better isn't that so stupid that everybody's trying to kill this guy just because he wants to make the country like super awesome how does that even make any sense how do people want the country to suck that badly that they're gonna go and try to kill somebody who wants to make it awesome <coughs> oh i hate my country you know, the, 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 these type of people will be the first to complain that the country is so racist and complain about how terrible it is. 
here you are here, here you are with a guy that wants to make it awesome and they want to go and kill him. What? Here's your option for to be happy, I guess, and you you want to throw it away? <laughs> Why are you so stupid? I don't know. I'm worried though. I mean, I'm going to try to stay up and watch the election. I don't know if I'll be able to the whole time because um, you know, if it's like any of the other years, it does go pretty late. I mean, in 2016 when Trump won, didn't the announcement get made at like 2:30 in the morning? And yeah. I mean, I have work in the morning and I work two jobs, so I <laughs> I'm working all day. So I don't know if that's really a smart idea for me to be uh trying to function on like no sleep but i am interested but the other thing is who knows if the tallies will be will even be up i mean <laughs> you know we probably won't really know until like saturday or something oh well this state has to do a recount duh. because we couldn't be ready in time to have people who know how to count right the first time duh. <laughs> anyways i guess that's all i got um yeah, hopefully hopefully in a couple of days from this recording, right now it's Monday at about 10 o'clock p.m., so hopefully in a couple of days' time, hopefully in 24 hours, so, well, I won't be 24 hours, so yeah, let's just stick with a couple of days' time. We have, a, we have <clears throat> knowledge of who's next, and hopefully it is the red option, <laughs> the correct option. Ooh, well, I guess that's all I got for now, so thanks for checking this out with me, and until next time, I said see ya.